like I say, this is more like a seminar setup, and I've taught this as a seminar, and usually in a seminar I have an hour and a half. And so I have shortened this up, I've thrown it out, I've got just the, you know, just the highlights for you, and I was looking at it, and it's like, you know what, if I put all those things up on PowerPoint, you guys are going to be overwhelmed. So here's the plan, we're going to put the video up online with a link to all my notes. Because you need to be checking out these verses. You need to be praying about it. You need to be researching it. You need to be doing the, the due diligence here. I, I want to pray. Let, I want to pray before we start here for a specific reason. Because often when we start talking about spiritual things, there's all kinds of stuff that gets in the way. And I don't want their distraction is the wrong word. It's, it's, maybe it's the right word. But Heavenly Father, right now, I pray that my lips would say your words. Not that, Lord, your word tells me I need to be speaking the very oracles of God. And Lord, I'm praying for that, but not to set myself up, but so that ears could hear exactly what you have for them to hear today. I pray, Lord God, that anything that sets itself up against the, the knowledge of God would be torn down. I pray, Lord God, that everything, Lord, that, that we'd be open to hear what you're saying, that we would evaluate it and test it and go to your word and say, is this true? And Lord, most importantly, most importantly, Holy Spirit, have your way here in our midst today. And we thank you for that in your precious name. What if today you could break off the fear of judgment of others? You know, what if today you could, those embers that seem to be just burning, that just can't light up, that, that what if those would just spark into flame today? What if... Today in this place, you can encounter God and it would change your life forever. That should be every Sunday, but today it is entirely possible as we give room for God. This is the second of the series. The first one we talked about love. And we what we practiced was showing love to others by drawing pictures for each other and trying to interpret them in a godly way. I've since learned that we could actually include scripture verses and quotes and, you know, so for those of us who can't draw, that we still have a way to do it. But today we're doing something a little bit different because today we're talking about strengthening ourselves as we go. Our church is going through a series on the kingdom of God and we, we're, it's till at least the end of the year. It might go longer than that. And one thing Jesus did when he talked about the kingdom, he sent people out to practice the kingdom. And that's why we're having these kind of seminar things, so that you have a chance to practice it. It's a safe environment. You're not judged by anybody. And you can start, you know, trying things out. If you look in the Bible, which we'll quickly do today, <laughs> we, there's, there's 10 ways that we can strengthen ourselves. The first six occur when we're together in the church. Now, I know that in the church, sometimes it's the, the worst place to find grace. You know, I've sat through sermons by Job's friends that don't give any hope but just despair. You know, I've heard those things when the word's been used to, to belittle and bash. I've, I've seen prophecy shame people and not encourage them. I've seen that when performance outstrips presence. And yet, the book tells me it is the place that we get encouragement when we gather. And my experience tells me that when you have been wounded in community, you can only be healed in community. I, I, I've got a, a friend who's a, a psychologist, and she's, she believes everybody can only be healed in community. 
it's not talking to her, it's getting them involved with some with a group of people that love them and have grace for them and can can show them God's God's love. That's how she finds her success. Anyway, quickly let's go through the six things. And then quickly we're gonna go through three of the things that we can do ourselves. And then we, we gotta have time on the fourth thing that we I need to explain properly. First thing. Hebrews 13.9 says, grace is how we get strengthened when we're together. He says, don't get carried away by all kinds of strange teachings, for it is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, not by ceremonial foods, which are no value to those who eat them. That's Hebrews 13.9. Again, don't, I, I will give you the notes later so you can look all these things up. <coughs> Speaking. As we speak to each other, as you hear the word of God, you should be encouraged. 2 Corinthians 12.19 have you been thinking all along we've been defending ourselves to you? We have simply been speaking in the sight of God to, as those in Christ. And everything we do, dear friends, is for your strengthening. Uh, number three, music, teaching, revelation, and supernatural gifts are for our encouragement. 1 Corinthians 14, 26, what shall I say? When you come together, everyone have a hymn, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation, and all of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. You know, for years and years, my whole church life, I've just, when does this happen? <laughs> when, when can we all come with a song or a hymn or a spiritual song? When do we do that? We do it in small groups. We do it when we're away, and, and I think, um, I, 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 it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're working on a way we can do it Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only laughing because I'm making the uh, leadership nervous because we're going to talk about it tomorrow night. It's coming sometime. I'm not saying it's coming next week, but we will be doing it sometime. And that is we're going to make turn this, di this, this monologue into a dialogue, and you're going to be able to, to encourage each other in the service, during the service. We'll set it up and structure it that way. Um, number four, prophecy. 1 Corinthians 14.3 But everyone who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. I think the next time we do an activation service in November, I think that's prophecy. My plan is to bring in two complete strangers to you. Have them sit on hot seats, at chairs we would call hot seats up here. And you're just going to bless them with what you hear God telling them. And it's going to be amazing. It's absolutely, we've done this all over the place. And it just... It blows us all away because how can God speak to me so wonderfully? And I'll explain all that when we get there. Five, it's individuals. First Thessalonians 3, uh, 2 and 3. We sent Timothy to visit you. He is our brother and God's co-worker in proclaiming the good news of Christ. We sent him to strengthen you, to encourage you in your faith, and to keep you from being shaken from the troubles you're going through. But you know you are destined for such struggles. <laughs> we don't have time to talk about that verse. But it's, it's a good one to remember. Uh, individuals. Um, our conversation cafe this week, we were talking about how God has encouraged us through trials. And all of our stories focus around people that have come alongside. It's always people. It's always through people. And God does that, you know, it can be a stranger that God talks through. I've got times where I'm sure it's an angel that's appeared to encourage me. But, you know, um, and, and, yeah, anyway, individuals encourage us. Six, it's love. We're encouraged when we're together through love. And that's the motivating factor. It's done through individuals. It's done through the speaking. It's comes, it manifests itself in grace. It's through the music, the teaching, the revelation, and supernatural gifts. 1 Thessalonians 3, 12 and 13. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with his holy ones. I'm preaching to the choir here today, I know, because you are here. That's, but we're also videotaping this. Well, recording it on digitally formatted, it's not videotaped. And um, other people will see it. I want you guys to know, it, it's, I was trying to remember the quote about democracy. Democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the other ones. Right, Winston Churchill? Church is the worst form of us being encouraged, except for all the other ones. Like, it's, it's, it is the best, but it's not without its warts and not without its lumps. And how can you experience grace if you don't mess up in the first place? How can you experience love if you don't extend it to someone else? 
You know, God has made us to be together, to encourage each other, to build each other up, to strengthen us when or each other when when we when we have troubles and when we have difficulties. Pray for Vera and Neil. She came to me to, this morning and asked for a special prayer because her her sister died and now they have to rearrange everything in their schedule to get down there. They're driving down there instead of flying in a couple of weeks. And there's lots of things to change. Can just encourage them, pray for them, and let them know if you can help out in any way. I don't think they're looking for help, but it never hurts to ask. Um, bless them. Now, there are four ways that Scripture tells us that we can strengthen ourselves in ourselves. When David was uh, with his, his the people who had become his mighty men, uh, they were away, and their town, Ziklag, got taken. And... Um, all the wives and the kids were were kidnapped, and the people came back. And his mighty, the people who would become his mighty men, talked about stoning David. <laughs> and, and the next verse says, "And David strengthened himself in the Lord." There's there we have a responsibility ourselves. It's not just that I come here Sunday morning and I feel so good, but by Monday afternoon it's like, ah, oh. you got the rest of the week to be building yourself up. And even if you come to music on Tuesday and prayer on Wednesday and, and uh, the, the, the conversation on Thursday and the ladies thing on Saturday and the men's thing on Saturday, it, I mean, those are all times together. You still got those moments in the day. You still got those moments of the week. You need to know how to strengthen yourself in the Lord. First way, uh, look at the notes. I got, you gotta follow my rabbit trail here. Um, it's joy and praise. Nehemiah 9, or in 8, 9, 8 10, uh, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You're going to have to look at my notes to see how uh, praise lines up with joy, but it does in Scripture. Trust me, let's just go with that for now. Um, it's, you can choose Pray. You, you can choose to praise God in whatever the circumstances, and joy flows from that praise. When you see, you can make yourself feel joy by choosing to praise. You can you can uh, erupt into praise as you choose joy. It's, they're 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 kind of both of the same. Um, you can, Psalm yeah, Psalm thirty four one to four is a great one for that. Second way and number eight in total, it's the Word of God. We strengthen ourselves in the Word of God. Psalm 119, 27 and 28. Let me understand the teaching of your precepts, and then I will meditate on your wonders. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. How do you strengthen yourself according to your word? He will keep you him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Memorize this thing. Meditate on it. If nothing else, go through the Psalms and start reading until you get to one that fits your situation. Because every situation of, of, that you're going to face is in the book of Psalms. And then when you get there, camp out for a while and start to pray that Psalm. And my favorite for a long time is Psalm 13. Psalm 13, uh, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? Not here, but at other times in my life. Will you forget me forever? How long must I... Uh, how much? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I, I wrestle with my thoughts and have, have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemies triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say I have overcome him. And my foe will rejoice when I fall. He doesn't stop it there. He goes, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. Two-thirds of the Psalms are Psalms of lament. Almost all of them will turn that lament back to God. Whatever situation you're going through, whatever struggle you're feeling, you can camp out on the Psalms. Read the Psalms till you can camp out on one. That doesn't excuse you from not memorizing this book. Memorize it. Get it be a part of you doesn't stop you from meditating on it. Meditating is just thinking about it. It's like a cow chewing its cud. You just keep on, you, you, you think about it, and then you swallow, and then you spit it back up, and think about it some more, and you swallow, and you think back up, and you think about it some more. How does it, how does it apply to me? What, does, what is God saying to me about this? What God, I got it. Like, just this week, I was reading through Colossians um, in the Message Bible, 
because you know I'm, I'm telling you Colossians is just blowing me away. So I decided to read in the Message Bibles. And there's a verse in there in the Message translation. It's just awesome. It's, it's um, I speak to you with, what is it, profound... Oh, I'll tell you later. It's a good, I'm trying to, it, it's profound. He told me about Carol. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Profound, profound. Profound common sense. That's what it is. Profound common sense. It's like, that's who I want to be. I want profound common sense. God, show me, how can I make profound common sense? Anyway, we'll get to the common sense part. We'll, we'll go for profound right now. Anyway, um, so the word of God. Number nine. Waiting on God. We can we, we can wait on God. And, and I want to read to you from the Amplified Version from Isaiah 40, verses 27 to 31, because it explains how we're to wait for God. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting Lord God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. There is no one searching of it. There's not there there is no searching of his understanding he gives power to the faint and the weary and to him who has no might he increases strength causing it to multiply and making it abound even youth shall be faint and grow be weary and selected young men shall feeble feebly stumble and fall exhausted but those who wait on the lord who expect look for and hope in him shall change and renew their strength and power they shall lift up their wings and mount up close to God as eagles. Mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint to become tired. I love that because for most of us, we think wait on God and it's like, oh man, I, I do nothing, right? Okay, we're just going to wait on God. What does that mean? Trust Him. It's who expect who look for and who hope in God. Those are actions. That's activity. It, it, there's, there's something about expectancy that pleases the heart of God. To wait on Him is to, for him to, is to wait for Him to speak knowing that He will answer. Jeremiah 33.3 3 is, uh, what is it? Call and I will answer you and show you the great and mighty things that you know not of. To wait on him is to wait for his presence to be pal palatable, pal palpable. Knowing his presence is what makes us different from the other people of the earth. It's just waiting for God to, you know, we know God, we know God is here. But when we know God is here, wow. To wait on him is to wait for his pleasure knowing that he rejoices over you is singing Zephaniah 317. It's not, uh, okay, throw up your hands. It's got to be up to God. It's a God, what do you want me to do? God, what are you doing? God, how can it be a, it would be a part of what you're doing? It, it's an expectation. So there's lots of ways that we can strengthen ourselves. The big one is coming together and encouraging each other and going through the different ways that God tells us. On our own, we get this book in us. We meditate on it. We read it. We, we wait on God with expectation. What's the other one? I forget. The tenth one that I want to spend time unpacking and talking to you about is praying in the Spirit. Jude one twenty says, You dear friends, build yourself up in the most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. First, Chronic, First Corinthians 14.4 says, A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally. Is praying in tongues the same as praying in the Spirit? Well, I believe you can pray in the Spirit by praying the will of God. But it's clear that Paul thinks the two are interchangeable. Because in... 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 14 to 6, he says, If I pray in a tongue, my spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I'm saying. Well, then what shall I do? I will pray in the spirit. I will also pray with words. I understand. I will sing in the spirit. I will also sing with words. I understand. 
For if you praise God only in the spirit, how can those who don't understand you praise along with you? And how can you join in in giving thanks when they don't understand what you're saying? You'll, you'll be giving thanks very well, but you won't strengthen other people by what you hear, by what they hear. I was about, it was the week I turned nine years old. So I don't know if I was eight or nine, but that, that, that general area. The very first time I heard that the same thing that happened in the book of Acts in chapter 2, where Jesus said, wait, there it is again, wait, until the promised Holy Spirit comes. And you, you will receive power when he comes. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. I was nine years old. I didn't know that it was supposed to be difficult. I just went and I prayed, and man, something happened to me. I was just, I was euphoric. Like I wanted, I was running around the camp. I was ready to go try running across the lake. Like it was just, it was, I didn't sleep at all that night. It was something that just, it changed my life. It changed my life. It was years later when I was been talking to, with people that, that all these problems come out. It's difficult for people. I had a friend who was told he wasn't holy enough because he couldn't speak in tongues. Like, how stupid is that? It, I'm sorry, that is the definition of stupid. It, it's like, maybe maybe God just doesn't want to give them to you. It's like, that's <laughs> not even in the book. Luke says, Jesus says, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? That, in context, is the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit that's with us as a seal guaranteeing what's to come. We all have the Holy Spirit. But I'm saying this gift of tongues is something that builds us up. I speak in tongues. I, I build myself up. 1 Corinthians 14.4, Jude one twenty. I speak to God directly without pretense. 1 Corinthians 14.2, I fulfill a command to pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Uh, Ephesians 6.18, when I'm praying in tongues, I don't understand what I'm saying. I do it in private. I'm not doing it in public. It's in private. And I'm praying. Um, you know, I have to trust God that what I'm saying is His will. <laughs> and I've learned to trust that. And I'm praying His will, and I'm not praying for a show, and I'm not praying if I am you know, get the right words and the right combinations. God's going to hear me. Come on, you've all been there. You all do that sometimes. <laughs> You can't do that when you're talking and when you're speaking in tongues because you, it's not, you, you don't understand it. Um, you have words to continue when, when our words run out. Romans 8.25, with, with the Spirit helps us in our weakness with groans with words cannot express. We can pray confidently knowing we intercede for others according to the will of God. Romans 8.28, 26 and 27. Look these things up to make sure I'm telling you the truth because you might not have heard this this way. Uh, it's also a sign for unbelievers. 1 Corinthians 14.22 I've been in services where it's, it's more natural to speak out in, in uh, what's the right word? Prophetic utterances. You know, like it's the, the, the service goes slow and then someone will speak up a word of encouragement. That's a prophecy. And sometimes someone will speak out a word in a language no one understands. That's the gift of tongues. Paul is quite clear in 1 Corinthians. When that happens, everything slows down and waits for the interpretation. Because if you just move on from that and everyone's speaking in tongues, it's just an insult to everyone who can't understand what's going on. And it's just, it's crazy. You don't want that. But I've been in services when a message of tongues has been, been given and someone from another part of the world who just happens to be visiting there today, it's his dialect and from his village and he is blown away because God is revealing the secrets of his heart. And that is just cool. <laughs> There's nothing like that. It's just cool. I'm not going to, you know, it's not a theology. It's not, this is what has to happen. But when it happens, it's awesome. Have you ever read 1 Corinthians 14 and noticed that Paul tells it, says, I wish that you would all speak in tongues. We glance over it because right away he follows it up with, I'd rather have you prophesy. Because when we're gathered, it's about encouraging each other. But for yourself, when you're alone, you need to strengthen yourself. 
You need to build yourself up. Tongues is the gift, the only gift that is for you. Tongues is the only gift that comes to the body. The stronger you are, the stronger we are. So it does benefit the body, but it is chiefly for your benefit to build yourself up in God. But is it for everybody? There are three places in this book that talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're gifts of the gifts, gifts from God. First Corinthians 12, the Holy Spirit gives these gifts. That's the one we're most familiar with. In uh, Ephesians chapter 4, Christ gives the gifts for the church. Those gifts are the apostle, the prophet, the, uh, the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist. Those are the gifts Christ gives. Romans chapter 12, it talks about God. These are the gifts God gives. I'm assuming that's the Father because it just kind of works it out nicely. I don't understand what it means, but take a look at what happens when we, we look at mostly from uh, Romans chapter 12. Not everyone is a teacher. Romans 12, 7. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit, to teach. But we're all told to teach, Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 20. It's not my gift, but I'm told to do it. Uh, not everyone's gift is generosity, Romans 12, 8. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. But we're all told to be generous, 2 Corinthians 9, 11. Not everyone's gift is encouragement, Romans 12, 8. But we're all told to encourage, 1 Thessalonians 5.14. Not everyone's gift is serving, Romans 12.7, but we're all told to serve.